<laughs> well, he figures out what it means. We want mashed potatoes, but we don't want mashed potatoes. So we must turn this cauliflower into this super smooth cauliflower mash. The first version is the quickest and the easiest, waiting approximately 15 minutes, of which most of the time is consumed with tomfoolery. He begins with a quick rinse of the albino broccoli and then proceeds to deleaf it. The white trunk is severed but not discarded. This section is as edible as the florets. It just needs a bit of a makeover. He slices around the core to remove any leafy pots and removes the bottom section. After it's cleaned up a bit, it's set aside and deconstruction continues. The specimen is cut into bite-sized pieces. However, it is not for consumption, but for even consistency while cooking. He sets the cauliflower aside and introduces the magical flameless heat box. Then a large pot with a decent amount of water is brought to a boil. As the saying goes, a boiled pot never watches, or whatever. Once the water is boiling, it's time for the cauliflower to enter the hot bath. He's careful not to splash the hot water as he is not wearing sufficient protection. He is, however, protected from gases, because cooking cauliflower smells like farts. Now he has eight minutes to wait. Pierce a florette with a four-pronged spear. If it does not slide off, cook for another minute and try again. However, if it slides off by its own volition, it is perfectly tender. Using his favorite breathable tin foil hat, he removes the cauliflower from the hot water and into a strainer. This version does not concern itself much with having the driest cauliflower, just simply strain as best you can, preferably over a sink. He then brings in his food processor, or... <laughs> However, it appears to be controlled by some other world force. <laughs> Alarming, but he has no potato masher to perform this process in the traditional manner of the Amish. He moves the lid and slides the brassica called Le Carica straight into the vessel of a thousand cuts. He then adds kosher salt, heavy cream, and a large chunk of milk fat, i.e. unsalted butter. Upon replacing the lid, it's time to pulse. The mash is a bit thick, so he adds more heavy cream, add more butter, and returns to swirling. After an iteration taste test, he decides to add about another tablespoon of butter, black pepper, and he will also need a rasp for the secret ingredient of his mash. Nutmeg. He only needs a tad to bring out the subtle flavors and leave your guests guessing what the secret is. Never, ever tell them. He unseats the vessel and cleans, because... Ah. Then it's time to plate the first version. He puts good boogies the mash into a bowl and tops it with a nice knob of butter. He could also add bacon, cheese, parmesan, and all sorts of assortments. However, this cauliflower mash is aimed for quick and delicious, done in 15 minutes. And it... That's really good. It's really good. But I think we can do better. But first, he needs more cauliflower. That's weird. The second version of the cauliflower mash requires a bit more time and effort. However, it is handsomely rewarded with a super creamy alternative that's a near perfect match for mashed potatoes. It starts with the same process of rinsing, cutting, and boiling water as the first. Boop. Once the cauliflower enters the pot, he begins preparing for the second half of the dish. For that, he requires some garlic. He roughly minces a single clove as he doesn't plan on fighting vampires this evening or the next. Once the cauliflower is tender, again he removes it, strains it, and this time sets it aside to cool. He brings in an unnecessarily large saucepan since his smaller one ran away. And the power... What is going on? ...goes out. A rather odd series of connected events. What is going on? Try to film! Gosh. As the power returns, he continues. Using a fine mesh seize over a large bowl, he then requires his potato ricer. Although it appears to be a ginormous garlic press, it is anything but. He places small amounts of cauliflower inside and squeezes the two handles to compress the cauliflower into juice and what looks like poorly crafted plate. The resilience to rice is non-existent. The ricer keeps incredibly fibrous parts out of the rice while making a fine substance. In the saucepan, he adds about two tablespoons of unsalted butter over low heat. Once melted, he adds the minced garlic until it becomes fragrant making sure not to burn it. 
In the meantime, he returns his attention to the cauliflower. He squeezes the paste against the sieve, removing as much moisture as possible without forcing it. It is best described as a sort of sandy mud. He places it into a small container with straight vertical walls, and adds this garlic butter straight into the vessel, making sure to get every last bit. He adds a bit of heavy cream, and for the next part he wants total control, so he turns to his immersion blender. In and on it goes. There are no precise measurements for this recipe. Different cauliflower sizes, different moisture levels, and personal preference play a large role. Therefore, he slowly adds heavy cream and butter until it is near his ideal smoothness. His final ingredients are a bit more butter, black pepper, and the king's spice, and back to blending. Then it is time for the final taste test. That's worth the extra effort. Look how creamy that is. Incredibly smooth, incredibly creamy. No inclination that the main ingredient is not waxy potatoes. That is a dead ringer for mashed potatoes. Let's plate it. Plate in this version is much the same. He scoops them into a bowl and, using a spatula, creates a rustic twirl. Not too perfect, not too imperfect. Some fresh black pepper, a knob of salted butter, some thinly sliced chives, and he sprinkles them across the top. If you enjoy mashed potatoes but can't eat potatoes, this cauliflower mash is for you. If you want to level up below carb cooking and kitchen skills, make sure to like this video and watch one of these other amazing recipes so you can kick diabetes square in the face. Much thanks to my supporters on Patreon, and until next time, eat well. Yeah.